by its rod. And this one's called Don't Let Jesus' Judgments Bother You. It's like hearing Jesus say to us, Don't fear. Trust in me 100%. If you've got 100% faith in Jesus, you got 100% peace of mind. You're doubting in Jesus somehow with Satan's lies about Jesus. You're going to have some fear and worry creeping in. We need to hear Jesus say to us, I control it and I can work it out for your good. If you don't believe Jesus controls everything 100%, you can't trust him 100%. It's what you choose to believe that creates good emotions or bad emotions, peace and joy, or fear and depression. Believing Jesus' truth, spiritual love, joy, peace, believing Satan's lies, emotional fear, depression, anger, trying to find happiness through personal safety or personal pleasure. Doesn't make you feel very happy or safe. Trusting in Jesus, spiritual help, can give you spiritual emotions like perfect love, perfect peace, fullness of joy. And it's up to us whether we want to be a friend of Jesus or an enemy of Jesus, get saved from hell or don't get saved from hell. Handle Jesus' judgments on the wicked. Successfully, or don't handle Jesus' judgments on the wicked successfully. Jesus has a good purpose for his judgments. He's trying to save a few souls from hell through it. Like, sometimes I ask Jesus something like, Why don't you do some miracles and make a better world to live in instead of it being like a hellhole, Jesus? And he says to me, Well, If 90% of the people around you want to be wicked, it's going to create a hellhole for you to live in, Rod. I had to live in a hellhole when I was here. Paul had to live in a hellhole when he was here. Joseph, Daniel had to live in hellholes. Moses. But, I can help you through the hellholes. It's like everything we go through, Jesus has been through it ten times worse than we have. He didn't come to a good world to live in. He tried to teach some truth for God. They wanted to crucify him. John the Baptist wanted to teach some truth for God. They wanted to cut his head off. They put Shadrach in a fiery furnace, but uh, God helped them through it. It's not a good world. Pharaohs of Egypt aren't good. Kings of Babylon aren't good. Satan's not good. And they want to run this world. So Jesus can make you happy in a hellhole. It's like Jesus says to me something like, I'm going to give you a perfect world to live in someday, Rod. It's just not yet. you got to live in the hellhole on earth now. But I can help you through it. Bring good out of it for you. Make you happy in it spiritually. And help you not to be bothered by it. Don't let Jesus' judgments for the wicked bother you. It's like a vision I had. I was talking to Jesus on a park bench. I asked him the question, what does the future look like, Jesus? And he said to me, economic collapse, famine, rioting, apostasy, and World War III. This was a couple of years ago. I didn't think that sounded like too good of a future. But then I went into a vision of me and Jesus dancing around World War III. And there's all kinds of people dying and guns and killing and tanks and everything. And I look at Jesus when I'm dancing with him, and he says, don't let it bother you, Rod. I control this. That's what he tries to teach me. No matter how bad it gets, like the days of Noah, Sodom and Gomorrah, God's controlling this. Jesus is controlling whatever's going on now. You can fully trust in Jesus 100% if you want to. He made me in the womb. He's kept me safe for 61 years on earth. He's like a good shepherd who feeds me and takes good care of me. Even through death can work out for my good. So we shouldn't fear anything with Jesus. 
It's like he can uh, help us through death. I believe God helped John the Baptist get his head cut off. Shadrach in a fiery furnace. Paul in a rat infested prison for a couple of years like a hellhole. He can help me through what I'm going through now. I'm not alone. Jesus is with me. So I'll try to explain a bit about a, a vision I had recently. I was getting into an elevator and I thought I was alone or something. And then all of a sudden somebody walks in. It's Jesus. I'm thinking, can I trust this guy? What's he want me to do? In the, what's he going to say to me in this elevator? And so he starts talking to me. He says, I want to fill you with joy. I want to fill you with peace. I want you to trust in me with all of your heart. And he'd like show me his nail scarred hands and say, I, I took the punishment for your sins. So you can be close to me now. And it's almost like he's putting his arm around me in the elevator. And I'm feeling this peace and joy. And I'm thinking, wow, I never want to leave this elevator. I never want to stop being close to Jesus or something. Instead of thinking, oh, is he going to punish me for my sins or something? Or does he care about me? Or No, he he's also saying, I'm always with you, Rod. I don't leave the elevator or get on it. It's just a vision for trying to understand stuff about trusting Jesus coming in the elevator or something. Anyways, I felt so joyful and peaceful in that vision. I thought, it's like it just Jesus just has a touch and you're full of joy and peace or whatever. You just have to start believing what the blood of Jesus could do for you to take your sins away. I'm as righteous as Christ is in the elevator because he makes me that way. He takes all my sins punishment from me. So I can be in the Holy of Holies in His presence where there is a fullness of joy. So Satan's in the job of trying to get us to believe in lies and doubt in Jesus. Jesus can't be good if the world's a hellhole. Jesus can't be good if you're suffering or something. Another thing that happened with Jesus in the elevator was he said to me, Rod, can I look at your back pain surgery scars? I thought, okay. And he said, I really love that. I really love you having faith in me through suffering circumstances. It's like this whole world is like a suffering love test or something. It's like looking at Jesus on the cross and saying, he suffered ten times more than I'll ever suffer. And it's like looking at Jesus on the cross saying, I'm doing this for you. I love you, and I want to take the punishment for your sins for you. That kind of thing. So I might make some video in the future with sort of like Jesus blooding on the cross pictures from a Mel Gibson passion movie or something. And then have like little word signs come up. This is how much I love you. I want to take the punishment for all of your sins. Suffering love gets the greatest rewards in heaven or something. I don't know. I just get this vision of making a video with Jesus blooding on the cross and then truth, thoughts or something coming on the screen. But it would be very powerful because the cross of Jesus Christ should be the most important thing to us. That was God pouring his judgment or punishment out on wicked people. If we don't let Jesus take the punishment for our sins, we got to face it. That's what hell's about. That's what great suffering on earth for the wicked's about. So we may be hearing a lot of people have dreams or prophesy about very difficult times to come. I've had a couple of visions where angels have been sledgehammering people, taking their food and their money and their health away. And Jesus is saying that's good for them. I've seen people sick and poor and dying in stormy visions. And Jesus saying now it's time to preach and do miracles when they're sort of like sick and poor and dying or something. It's like God talking to Noah. Well, it's just the time now, Noah. i got to drown all these wicked people. It's just the time now, Abraham. i got to burn all these people in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's just the time now, Rod. I gotta punish a lot of wicked people on earth, though. 
in 2020 and beyond. But don't let it bother you. I control it. I can work it out for you good. I can make you happy in it. A happy Noah watching him drown. It's like what the Bible teaches. Jesus said, I didn't say it, Jesus did. A few enter heaven. The rest go to hell. What's that? Like 10% going to heaven, 90% going to hell? Jesus ain't bothered by it. He likes it. I'm supposed to like it too. We have to understand God can give us wisdom so it doesn't bother us. We can have this knowledge that Jesus never makes a mistake and if he wants this happening, it's good for the creation or something. He didn't have to save any of us. He could have drowned us all in the days of Noah. There'd be nobody alive on the earth today. But he's decided to give us a free will choice, which can create a lot of evil, and try to give us help to save us from being evil and going to hell with Satan or whatever. Start to be a Jesus follower on your way to heaven instead of a demon follower on your way to hell. It's like some thoughts that I have about... It's like a demon-controlled, hell-bound world. It's like a Satan's hell-bound slave world. It's like from the 1950s to the 2020s, it was like a rich man going to hell society or something. People think they were safe in the 1950s to the 2020s, but if they dropped dead, it could be hell time forever, and that's what happened to most people. It wasn't a safe time. People really didn't care about getting saved by Jesus or obeying them, and that's very dangerous to do. Instead, they thought, oh, selfish pleasure will make me happy, like a rich man going to hell. And none of that has to bother me. It's like you can have a great relationship with Jesus. You can handle the judgments of God on the wicked. It's like in my visions, I'm not getting sledgehammered. I'm not sick and poor and dying. I'm, I'm doing well with Jesus. That's what he's trying to say to people. Like Jesus in the boat during a storm to the disciples. Why are you afraid? I control everything. I'm trying to test you. To see if you'll trust in me asleep in the boat or trust in yourselves watching a storm ready to drown you or something. So that's what we have to do. We have to get a really close relationship with Jesus. Let him teach us that he wants it this way. He controls it. Satan's not in control. Jesus controls Satan like a puppet. Pharaoh wasn't in control. King of Babylon wasn't in control. The religious leaders of Jesus' day crucifying Jesus weren't in control. Jesus was in control of it all. There's a storm in the boat, but Jesus is controlling it. Stop storm. World War III starts up. Jesus wants to allow it to start up. He can stop it anytime he wants to. If he doesn't want to stop it, it continues on. It's like watching people get sick and die or something. If that happens and Jesus doesn't intervene, that's what Jesus wants. We have to believe that Jesus doesn't make any mistakes. Jesus controls everything. Jesus can make you happy spiritually now. Happiness comes from being saved. Happiness comes from believing in truth. Happiness comes from obeying Jesus. When you do what Jesus tells you to do, he rewards you with spiritual joy and peace. You don't want to do what Jesus wants you to do. You don't get rewarded with spiritual joy and peace. And if you keep obeying Jesus through suffering things here on earth, which his judgments on the wicked can get pretty suffering, especially in the Great Tribulation, you can get great suffering love awards in heaven forever. Type thing. Like Jesus saying to me, uh... I'm going to give you a perfect world to live in. It's just not yet. you got to still live in this because of free will of choice and 90% of the people going to hell, hell hole. You want to follow Satan, you'll go to hell with Satan. You want to follow Jesus, you can go to heaven with Jesus. I want to give you a perfect world, right? It's just not yet. Well, you got to live in this hell hole world, earth first, like I did. And then after you die, I can take you to my perfect world to live in forever instead. That's what Christians are supposed to believe. So if we die, it's gain. If we stay on earth, well, maybe we'll get some more suffering level awards for obeying Jesus through doing suffering things and a suffering judgment on the wicked time in 2020 and beyond. So that's a bit about don't 
let Jesus' judgments bother you.